Welcome back to Step Up, where we learn from the best of the best in business. I'm David Wolf, media producer, and now here's your host, speaker, psychologist, supporter of military families, and sassy grandmother, Dr. Margarita Gurry. Well, thank you, David. It's nice to be here. And today we have one of the most amazing women I have ever met, one of the most amazing entrepreneurs I've ever met, Dr. Gail Carson, CSP. Welcome. Hi, how are you, Margarita? It's delightful I'm, to be here. <laughs> it's delightful. And I, I, David was teasing me that you're the spunky old broad. Well, I'm the sassy old grandma. So, <laughs> Yeah, boy, I'm, I'm, really, I'm in good company today, ladies. I'm it's not only a sassy old broad and a grandmother. I'm a great grandmother, too. So I've got you beat there, Margarita. <laughs> well, you know what? You got me beat in lots of ways. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. What can I say? <laughs> How many grandchildren and great-grands do you have? Oh, I just have one granddaughter and two great-grandchildren. I think that's going to be it. <laughs> oh, but that's wonderful. I'm I'm so happy for you. I'm especially happy um, Dr. Gail Carson is somebody who has wisdom from the best of the best in business because she is the best of the best. She's the co-founder of the Florida Speakers Association. She's president of the Carson Research Center. We'll find out more about that. She's consulted all around the world in like 50 industries, six continents, and she advises people on current business trends and cutting edge to stay ahead of competition. So we've got lots to learn. So tell us a little bit about Spunky Old Broad. Where's that come from? Well, believe it or not, it did come at a Florida speakers meeting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not surprised. (laughs) I had picked up our speaker and uh, she was in the front of the room and I was in the back of the room with two or three other women and uh, uh, we were kind of laughing about a couple of different things and then I kept saying shh shh and they kept saying shh shh and finally I said oh you know we're just a bunch of SOB spunky old broads and that's where it came (laughs) from and it stuck and I got a trademark and this is spunky old broad month so I always name a spunky old broad of the year And this year, uh, I'm announcing it here, really. I haven't even sent out a press release yet. My spunky old broad of the year is Dolly Parton. Uh, Oh, that's great. (laughs) But, yeah, I think being an SOB is a great thing. Well, I think so. I think so, too. And I'm I'm delighted to also be an SOB in every possible way. So that's wonderful. David, that's something you will never be able to be. I'm so sorry. No, there's a, I, well, unless I substitute the beef, a boy, eh, it doesn't quite work, but uh, spunky old boy, I don't know. No, uh, no, I digress. I can think of another B word, David, but we won't say it. <laughs> well, thank I, you. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking kind of rhymes with hazard, kind of good. Right. That's good. Right. All right. So, One of the things that I love doing is when I sit at the Florida Speakers Association meetings, they're about once a month, they're about 10 10 months out of the year, is to see people come in and they look at at, uh, Gail and they think, well, what does she do? So by looking at her, it's hard to tell because she's very modest. As straightforward as she is, she's very modest and humble. So Gail, please tell us, what do you do for all your very happy clients? Well, I I have a a couple of different markets. My my first market is women 50 plus. I mean, that is my passion and the thing I enjoy the most because I really believe that there are so many women who hit 50 and they figure that's all there is. I mean, where do I go from here? So I take it on as a, as a mission to let them know it's just the beginning. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be speaking in, um, in March at the East Bay Women's Conference out in the San Ramon, California. The keynoter is Dr. Jill Biden, you know, uh, our former vice yes. president's wife, and she and I both have a doctorate in education, so I'm really anxious to hear what she has to say. But they're bringing me in to talk about reinvention. And uh, believe it or not, the women are ranging from 35 on up, and more and more women who are hitting 35 and 40, which seems like, you know, babies to me, they are saying, I'm not happy, and I want to reinvent myself, and I want a a job that's either got more social impact to it, or more meaning to it, or I want to go into business for myself. So women 50 plus really is my first passion. My second passion is the media, because I do 12 radio shows a month, and I really enjoy that. I love it. I was trained in that in college. I was a television spokesperson for Clairol. I've had 
radio shows for years and years and years. And so that's my second passion and teaching people how to do that, how to get on radio and how to get on television. And then I still have clients who bring me in as a consultant uh, to help them improve their business, especially in marketing. So those are the things that I do and I really enjoy it. Well, that, that, that's just amazing. The show is really for entrepreneurs and sometimes for corporate leaders. Let's talk first about your first passion, reinvention. So what do you suggest to them if they want to reinvent themselves or even revamp an existing business? Well, I'm in my seventh reinvention, so <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really an expert at this. But I must say, uh, if they want to revamp their business, they need to take a, a really hard look at what they're doing and what the reaction of their customers are. A lot of people just take their customers for granted, not that they aren't good to them and service them well, but they don't anticipate what their needs may be in six months or a year. So I think that's important. And I also think it's important to look at other business outside of their industry to get ideas, because sometimes what other people are doing in totally different industries can be morphed into something that you can do for yourself. So uh, that would be if they want to revamp. Now, if they want to, you know, either sell their business or do something else, then I think they really need to take a look at what really puts a smile on their face. And can they make money at it? Can they make a living at it? Can they be successful at it? Because, I mean, um, if you want to put a smile on my face, just show me a cat or a dog, you know. (laughs) But I don't know necessarily if I would be able to make a living at that. Probably if if I had a grooming place or if I had a pet motel or something like that I could. No, you uh, could be the spokesperson for any animal movement. Well, you have an am- amazing way of saying things in a clear way uh, that's very compelling. I think you could revolutionize the 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 pet loving industry with as their spokesperson. Well, that could be, but that doesn't mean they're going to pay you for that. So well, I would should. Say, the goodness of my heart, but I would not necessarily think I would be able to make a living at it. So That's the thing that I think is important because, and especially for those people, you know, who are are just beginning in business, you know, it takes a lot. I mean, when I first started, I was so young. I was 21 years old and I was so young and didn't know anything. I mean, I did not have one business course. And the only thing I knew was that I had a passion, but I made it work because I worked very, very hard. However, times have changed. Uh, Things are different. Social media is different. They didn't have any of that. Everything was, you know, you had to go out and you had to make people aware of who you were. So I think uh, there's a lot at stake when someone says, I want to revamp or I want to start or I want to grow. I mean, I had a business with seven offices and I managed 350 people. I never want to do that again. So, (laughs) I mean, you know, it's great to grow, but do you know what you're growing into? That's, that's the thing. Of course, when I did it, I loved it. And that's, that was it. But after 20 years, 21 years, I sold the company because I was as big as I personally was going to get. And my experiences of partnering with people and that type of thing did not work out well. So that's what I decided to do. So how did you fall into this media business, the radio and TV show stuff? How did that happen? Well, I mean, I had radio shows when I was in college because my school, Emerson College, was a uh, broadcasting communication media school. So there were things I had to do as part of my curriculum and that I chose to do. uh, And that was where I started. And then I taught in my schools. I had a chain of career schools. And uh, several of them were modeling schools. So I taught TV commercials, how to go for a commercial, how to read uh, for a part and that kind of thing. So I was teaching it all the time, but really didn't think about it as, you know, uh, what we're seeing today. This was strictly for TV commercials and uh, movie parts and things like that. But I, uh, I started doing a show for Entrepreneur Magazine called Women in Business. And I did that for five years. And they came to me and asked me if I would do it. And I did for five years. And then they sold the magazine. And as you know, when people sell something, everything changes. 
including they canceled all radio shows. So I didn't do anything for a year or two years. And then I was at a meeting that someone told me to go to, which was not the meeting I should have gone to. But when people stood up and introduced themselves, a fellow introduced himself as owning a radio station. So I went over to him and I said, are you looking for new talent? Well, of course, you know, he thinks everybody comes up and says that. And, you know, kind of looked at me cross-eyed and said, well, we'll talk. (laughs) But I pursued it. And now my show is number one. Um, well, I have three different shows, but I have one that's number one on the network, and one that's number that that's What's the, the, the Women in Business, one? Women What's in Business show, okay. and my Living Regret Free show is number three, and then they gave me my own network, which is the SOB Radio Network, where I have women over 50 doing shows for women over 50. I have about 20 women doing shows for women over 50, all with their own genre, all with their own thing. I don't control what they do. And then I have um, uh, several shows on that network. So I do 12 a month, and um, that's how it got started. And then how I got the TV gig with with Clairol was I was on a panel. And those are the days of uh, Janet Reno when she was our attorney general. And she was on the panel, and I was on the panel. And I don't think I said more than five minutes. I have no idea what I even said. But at the end of the panel, Clairol, who was a sponsor, came up to me, their PR representative, and said, would you be interested on going cross country on a tour? And I said, yeah. And what I did was I went in to these various cities and I got a woman in her 20s, one in her 40s, one in her 60s, and redid them. I brought them on camera on a Tuesday, totally redid them on a Wednesday, and Thursday brought them back and we did a split screen showing the before and after and it was fabulous. Wow. That, yeah. was, that was your idea to do that? Uh, no, it was their idea. It was their idea. Wow. That was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure you were a major hit. So how long did you do that Clairol game? I did it for a year. It was quite, I mean, I still had my business, but I traveled for them for a year. So you continued with? All your my, business just remotely yeah, then. Yeah, my schools, my agency. I had I had seven career schools. I had a SAG after talent agency, where we booked you know the TV commercials and movies and that kind of thing. And then I had a convention service company, where we provided industrial shows, spouse programs, theme parties, etc. Wow. For wow. the conventions that came to Florida. Wow. So. Is not the question I was going to ask, but how do you keep up with all this? What are the organizational tips to keep up with all this? Well, you would think I would be organized, but I won't tell you. I'm just very disciplined and I'm very persistent. I won't tell you that I'm very organized. I'm organized in a disorganized way. But I, (laughs) you know, but I, I just, I loved every minute of it, Margarita. I loved everything that I did. So I did it with passion and I, I did it. I mean, I, I worked a lot. Thank goodness I was married to a guy that said, do whatever you want. And, you know, as long as you want. And, um, you know, it just um, I just put a lot of energy and time and effort into it. And then, of course, you know, being me, when everything was going well, I'd say, oh, and then I'd start something else. I'd either open another school or I'd start another division or, you know, but that's kind of I'm always doing many things at once. I was like that in high school. I was like that in college. So it was just a natural thing for me. Yeah, I can't I can't imagine you, one, doing just one thing, and two, uh, not liking what you do. I can't imagine that. Well, that's the I whole can't point. imagine you if I don't like- up with that. <laughs> yeah, I stopped doing it. <laughs> I, I just can't. So let's talk about consulting and marketing. Um, nowadays, with social media and all that, what is the secret to successful business? Give us some tips. Well, I think you have to be extremely aware of not only what your competition is doing, but what your clientele is doing in their business. So how can you help them further and more? And what's around the bend, which is the most you know important question of all. What do you, I mean, I think a perfect example is, I don't know where I heard it the last couple of weeks, that the last Blockbuster store somewhere, I don't know, closed and I think there are still seven or eight blockbusters in Alaska. 
because probably, you know, there's not a lot going on there. But the point is, is that when when Blockbuster was sold many years ago, Wayne, who owned, you know, the the stores, he he owned, you know, the parent company and he was really smart in diverging that at that time because he saw the writing on the wall. And I don't think it was not 11 months after they were sold that they became really uh, non-relevant. So I think you have to always be aware of what's going on and be ahead of the curve and get there before anybody else does. And I think I was reading this morning that, um, uh, I forget, I forget what it was, what, I don't remember which of the social networks was started because somebody could not get the certain information that they wanted. And so they started something online. And I don't know whether it was Google that bought it or Facebook that bought it, made them a millionaire and uh, at 24 or something. Uh, so wow. you need to be ahead of the curve so that you can anticipate what's going to come down the pipe because things are changing so fast that what you planned on, you know, for six months from now may be irrelevant. Well, you know, uh, when I see people in business, I often see they're having such a hard time keeping up with day-to-day. So what are some quick, you know, one or two tips people can do to become aware of the future trends? What do they do? Well, I think, um, first of all, they need to read. They need to be aware of uh, what's going on in their industry and in other industries and, uh, you know, just like, what, was it online banking that came from drive through pharmacies or drive through pharmacies came from drive through banking? But you have to look and see what others are doing that can be applied to you. That's number one. Number two, um, if you see something that you think is fantastic somewhere else, think about how can I take that and apply it to me? And then thirdly, what can you innovate yourself? And don't worry about other people stealing your idea, because if you had it first, by the time they ramp up, you'll be on to the next thing. And so I think just being aware and being inquisitive and not being stuck is the most important thing. Why are so many people stuck? (laughs) Because you get in a rut. I mean, again, I was something I heard this weekend that um, if you have if you develop Uh, a new habit let's just say you go to a seminar or something and you come out with this new idea and you go back to the ranch and you start practicing it three four five times and then you don't do it anymore you will automatically go back to the way you've always been doing things so it's 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 a matter of when when you come across a better way adopting it going back to my schools i had been scheduling classes a certain way for, I don't know, five, six, seven years. I mean, it took me three hours a week to schedule classes. And I hired a new teacher and she was watching me and watching me and she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing the class scheduling. She said to me, why are you doing it like that? And I said to her, I don't know, that's the way I've always done it. And she said, let me show you something. And she showed me a new way of scheduling classes. And I just bought myself on the head and I said, oh, my gosh, why didn't I know this before? And I saved myself two hours a week. I actually could schedule classes in an hour a week versus three. So sometimes out of the mouths of babes come these great ideas (laughs) and you just have to be open to them. Yes, I think that's that's really a good idea. So. In terms of the work that you do, we were just talking about some people being closed off. Who makes a good client? Because I know. I know that you have this philosophy that not everyone does make a good client. So who makes for a good client? Well, it depends on, again, what industry I'm in. Uh, If we're talking about a woman 50 plus, it's got to be somebody who is willing to change and who is willing to adopt a new way of doing something. And usually that happens because they are so frustrated or so upset or have so much pain that they'll do anything to change it. So that would be number one. Uh, Although I think anybody can improve their life. Uh, In terms of television and radio, I think it's the person who has something interesting to say. And that could be anybody if they have something that they think is newsworthy. Although, I mean, it could be someone that can show you how to decorate a cake. If you can't do that, which I cannot, 
um, that would be something that I would find interesting because I don't know how to do it. So it's having the idea that is relevant to that audience so that I mean, I, I was talking to somebody the other day who wants me to coach her and she, I said, well, OK, tell me your message. And she said, well, I just want everybody to be happy and live a better life. I said, but that's not unique. You can't get on TV and talk about wanting everybody to be happy and be unique because a lot of people talk about that. We've got to come up with three points that are unique to you that the public wants to hear. So the person who has uh, a unique viewpoint would be a good person for radio or television. And those are the people I would want to coach. And then as far as a business is concerned, I would think it would have to be a business probably entrepreneurial, probably a small business, where the owner would be open to change. Because the majority of small business that I have consulted with, the very, I would say, in almost all the cases, it was the owner who was the stopgap because yes. they were not willing to change. They were not willing to do things that are different. And frankly, I have been terminated from things that have, they brought me in and they've only let me stay once or twice because when I tell them that they're the problem, they don't want to hear it. Yeah, I've been fired for that too. <laughs> L- oh. Luckily, I've sometimes been hired by their staff who start their own businesses. So well, that's, that's a, a whole good thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Being gracious when one is fired for good cause makes a lot of sense. Exactly. So, so what is next for you? I mean, I can see you're doing just so much, but what's next? Well, I have a new book that just came out. I just got the proof um, uh, Friday. Congrats. And- it's called uh, the SOB Guide to Business Success. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a, a really great marketing and sales book. And so it'll be out soon. But I just had the proof and I really uh, like it very much. So uh, well, that, that's you've got to sign my copy. I'll go order one right away. <laughs> I, I so, need it signed. Are you going to have a, a book signing club or anything? Oh, I don't know. Right now, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it exactly. But I, uh, I just... I just okayed it, you know, because I had to okay the proof. But I, I would say that um, more for me is I really, uh, really want to build the media coaching, the media training, because that's where I think I can contribute professionally the best. My passion continues to be the woman 50 plus, but she does not necessarily want to pay to get her life under control, believe it or not. Women will spend thousands of dollars on Botox and and Hermes scarves and so forth, but they won't pay to better themselves, and that's a shame. So I, the media training is where where the the earnings are for me, and I know that I can contribute to the person who's going to get on TV and have a message that's relatable to that audience. That's wonderful. One thing nice about being a woman over 60 is I just care less and less about other people's opinion and just go in a more focused way and do what I think needs to be done. And it's such a relief. Um, well, you know, I have a marketing that way. mentor who says, if you're not offending at least one person every day, you're not doing something right. <laughs> is that Randy Gage? No, no, oh. but someone who is very similar to him. <laughs> 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 well, I've never seen you offend anyone other than I'm I'm sure a client if you're giving them feedback they don't want to hear. That's amazing. Well, so as, as we're closing, I'm so delighted you were here. People needed to hear what you had to say. Any final words of wisdom for an entrepreneur who just wants to get the most they can from your wisdom so they can be super successful? What do you say to them? I say to them, be as open as you can and keep your eyes wide open So you're aware of everything that's going on around you because out of that, you're going to find a gem. Oh, that's wonderful. So how do people reach you? Well, they can uh, go to my website, which is spunkyoldbroad.com. I put out a newsletter every week. They can sign up for that and they can keep in touch with me that way. They can email me at uh, gail, that's G-A-Y-L-E, gailcarson13 at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Okay. All right. We got that. Any Anything else? Anything from you, Sir David? 
Well, the, Gail, your story is, is tremendous. And of course, as a guy that's been in the music business and around media for many, many years, I, I'd love to talk to you more. Of course, uh, you can't cover it all in a short podcast, but you guys covered a lot of great ground. Uh, Gail, you, you, thanks for sharing your story and uh, so many insights for uh, our audience of entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Oh, I, I thought about another story you have to tell us real fast. The story of that you, I think when you came to Florida, you gave yourself like, Two days oh. to succeed, or what was that? Tell that story, please. I love that story. Well, you know, when I graduated college, I got out of college early, and uh, I wanted to be warm, so it was either Miami or California. So I came to Miami. It was closer, and I gave myself 14 days to make it. On the 14th day, I got the job I wanted, making $13 <laughs> a week. Trying to figure out Is that the sig- on it. Is that where the significance <laughs> of the number 13 comes from? <laughs> Not really, but, you know, and then within 30 days, I had figured out how to make $100 a week. And eight months later, I owned the business and I was wow. 21 years old. Love it. So wow, yeah. that's that, is, that is just so way cool. I'm I'm delighted that I remember to ask you about that story. And I'm glad we we're still rolling with that. <laughs> I mean, you know, the funny thing is when I first met Gail, she she and her friend uh, Connie were the co-founders together, Connie Gordon, um, Mm -hmm. a CSP. She was a Marine. She passed recently, but she was one of my childhood heroes. And Gail was actually talking to Connie Gordon. So I knew Gail was important because she was talking to Connie Gordon. (laughs) And then I got to listening to them. And then I saw that they were not only dear friends, but they were both pretty amazing. And then of course I, I asked, um, there's always one person in a group who knows what everyone's doing. And so I asked that person and they told me who you guys were. And I knew that I had to just watch you guys. And I watched you guys for a while. It took me about a year, year and a half before I had the courage to talk to Connie Gordon because she was my childhood hero. Long story there. but And then finally I I got to actually say hi to Gail Carson. So there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> It took me a while, and I'm I'm just delighted. And you haven't uh, stopped since. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, you know, ch- shutting me up was always a challenge for the family. So, <laughs> and there's always something to think and say, isn't there? And <laughs> yeah, it's true. That is true. Well, we wish you well with all of your endeavors. Um, now you have six books that are published. And uh, lots and lots of radio shows that you're blessing either by putting them on yourself or coaching others. And we look forward to hearing more from you. And we hope you'll come back on and talk to us about anything you want. Oh, well, that's very sweet. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gail. Sweet and smart. <laughs> you, you know, as, as my mother used to say, it only makes me look good to have you on. So <laughs> <laughs> you take care, Dr. Gail Carson, CSP and with the world's favorite SOB, Sassy Old Brock. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening to Step Up with Dr. Margarita Gurry. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and visit redshoeinstitute.com for more information about Dr. Margarita Gurry and the work she does. <laughs>